weird sight, guys. See where we're at. Oh, you haven't even told them yet? Nope, this is oh, the intro. Oh. Greatest place on earth. Look at where we are, guys. Brayden Motorsports. You guys know. Greatest place on earth. Both axles. Both axles. <laughs> Both axles. 
No. Yeah. Oh it man. Took the V1 with it. <laughs> Wait, so there's nothing we can do, right? Nope. It's a pusher. Oh my god. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'll need some help pushing oh, it onto the trailer in a little bit here. Well, I got a winch, so oh, we can get it up. Holy crap. <laughs> That's funny. That is Just funny. Oh yeah, right, no, right when I went to launch it, I started to slip the clutch and the second it, it hooked, it just like, oh. and I was slipping it pretty good, but this single disc clutch is super grabby. Mm -hmm. So like the second you're partially disengaged, it's just like. Dang. Um. <laughs> they were stock 240 axles from the 80s. Okay. What do you expect? You did your best. <laughs> <laughs> your best just wasn't enough. I guess course. now's a perfect time to talk about our sponsor, Kumo Tires. Yeah. That was a good, some good grip, I guess, right? A lot of know. grip. Yeah. Way more traction than this car was prepared for. Yeah. I tried. I should have really just like rolled out way slower, but literally I don't think I could have. Yeah, it seemed like I was like holding you were the best. handbrake too, trying to like slip it more. Uh-huh. Oh, it it bolt, bolt, just Oh, man. Uh, all right, well, I guess that's it for us tonight. That's, that's it, guys. Thanks for watching. <laughs> well, guys, brand new Kumo tires versus stock 240 axles. The axles lose every single time. I'll tell you what, these Kumo tires showed me tonight exactly why I like to race non-IRS cars. Tires were doing their job. We just had a, a couple hard parts that were not prepared to do their end of the bargain. Those axles just did not hold. We're gonna have to uh, get some beefier axles, come out back out here and uh, maybe try again because that's the uh, ultimate, ultimate like cliffhanger in a way. <laughs> yeah. Leaving without knowing how fast it went. I know. A broken 240 on the drag strip. It really brings Dang. me back to my uh, V1 days. I know, that was just like- a broken axle that was right the, off the bat. The Oh sure. yeah, I was up there having PTSD. I was like, <laughs> yeah. But I tried to be so gentle. I, I was know. like, I was trying to slip it so much. I don't know what RPM I was slipping it out, but it must have been a little too high. Yeah. But the car doesn't have like a two-step, so I can't really just like set it at a certain RPM. Hard to say, but this is gonna be a really short video. I'm scared. Is this gonna work? Oh! Wait, is it lined up? Wait! What if the thing snaps? It's a, it's a nylon. Is that little winch gonna pull this thing up? I don't know, is this little battery gonna... Where should I stand? Where you're at is fine. What's your plan? Uh, <laughs> oh. With ease. Things pretty good.
That is pretty impressive. Easy enough. <laughs> I, I can't believe how lucky battery did it too. Yeah, what the heck? You just put the things in there? Yeah, well, so if you look here, so Milwaukee batteries have um, have like a little positive and negative on them so you know which one's which. Yeah. So it's super simple. And then wow. you just click it on and it goes right up. Close. I haven't tried it yet, but I it's know. funny. Um, look, it still has three out of four bars the battery wow. that's really impressive that really i mean it just pulled it up like nothing too I know. Yeah, but, it's so easy and look at this too it so i was worried when i put it off to the side here that it was going to curl up on one side but yeah. it actually evened out pretty well nice yeah so that well. a lot of people were saying when i put it off in the corner here that it wasn't going to work yeah it just worked perfectly <laughs> seemed fine yeah. i just put on the glove and kind of controlled it a little bit yeah done deal that was easy enough yeah, that makes life easy. Time to go home. Yep. But now we know we can easily just get a car up. Yeah. Thanks you for wanna... breaking 240. I know. You want to close out the video now? No, I, I'm going to try to get some axles in the morning. Oh, okay. I want this video to end with us driving it. Well, the benefit of 240s is they're really easy to pull the axles on, and the axles are pretty cheap. So I ordered some last night, and they should be at O'Reilly's in the next, like, I don't know, half an hour to an hour. And I'm gonna pull these out real quick. That one's broken. Wow, that was a scary noise. And here's the other one, very broken. So you just have to unbolt all these, easy enough. And then unbolt the uh, axle nut, which is easy enough. You don't even have to pull the wheels off. So let's get to it. Well, that was easy. I think I have a total of uh, 10 minutes into pulling both of those. That's including time to jack up the cart. They are so easy to get out, honestly. I didn't even, you don't even take the wheels off or anything. It's just, they come right out. It's just these little nuts and bolts right here. And then it comes right out. So I labeled them driver side, passenger side, just so I know, just in case. Keep it simple, but they uh, they look cooked. Rip. Racing the Camaro tomorrow. Might as well spend all day working on the 240. That seems logical. Ooh. Hey, buddy. Mmm. That that sound. Jeez, the AC. Ooh, rain sense wipers active. Thank you. I know you're beeping. We're in a garage backing out. There's nothing behind me, I promise. As I was slipping the clutch more, I started to raise the RPMs with it. Like my, you know, left and right foot were kind of uh, teetering a little too quickly on each other, you know, because the goal is to slip the clutch and then as soon as you're out a little bit and the clutch is fully engaged to be fully on the gas but I didn't get that far but kind of a uh, tough break not really a big deal these axles are super cheap they're like 170 bucks each or they're like 170 bucks for a pair and they have a lifetime warranty the ones in the v1 you were like seven or eight hundred dollars and they refused to warranty them when they would break so this is a better deal i'm perfectly fine with replacing these and those look like the original ones so whatever it may have been a 50 percent driver error 50 percent axle but there's no way to really test and tune if you break instantly so i don't know load back load it back up and try again I don't know when I'll be able to get back out there because Christmas is coming up, so the track is not really doing many test and tunes until January. So, hard to say. But fresh axles with a warranty, we'll see how good they are. I know a lot of people say the stock ones are better than the uh, aftermarket ones like this. Uh, not many people leave their 240s IRS, and especially being a stick shift car. With a stick shift car, you can literally break those axles like instantly i mean you guys saw it it was just it started to like almost leave right but 
Then there's so many other things too, the suspension being that stiff, all solid bushings everywhere. It just took the brunt of it right to those CVs. Tough break. Um, we'll have to reevaluate our launching style. I tried to hold the handbrake to um, get some preload onto everything, but that single disc clutch is just literally an on and off switch. And it's funny too, because like when I'm in the burnout box and I'm not on a grippy surface, but I'm on those two, two, 45 tires or 235s not sticky i just dump the clutch in third gear and they're fine <laughs> i've literally dumped the clutch in third gear perfectly fine even when we were doing the uh, skid pad stuff at osw i was dumping the clutch in second gear and it didn't care at all the, it was fine on the grippy tire the second we were on a sticky surface not so fine uh quite the opposite actually so not really too beat up about it kind of a uh, part of the fun you know break stuff repeat well there was a random gypsy on the side of the road selling flowers is gypsy offensive is that something you're not supposed to say i don't know i've never been offended before so i don't know what is offensive but got some random flowers and you can see here look at that one axle this is the face of somebody who feels like they've been defeated because i ordered both and um, these guys over here told me that they were both gonna be here today when I ordered them yesterday. And when I got there, they said, ah, sorry, bud. One of them won't be here till tomorrow. Like, ah, you know, I guess whatever, right? Told me one thing, you did another. I'm fine, we're fine. Could have driven it today, but one axle. The other one will be here tomorrow, probably go pick it up. Sunday or Monday or something, but got Bronte some flowers, side of the road, and uh, hopefully she likes them, we'll see. Well, here it is, my one axle. See. I don't know what side this is, if this was the passenger or driver that they got, doesn't really say, it's just, it's a very generic box. It says import direct, OE replacement parts. I like how they only show the side of the world that it's made on. I mean, it is a JDM car, so I guess that makes sense, but let's see. Let's see if it says anything. Installation manual. Yada, yada, yada. Do not let them hang. I'm so confused. I don't even think this is anything about what axle it is. That's, that's not an axle. 05 Ford Freestar? I don't even know what that is. Here we go. Okay, that's that's definitely not a real wheel drive car. Those are definitely front wheel drive. Ooh, this thing looks a little different. It's a little bigger. Good thing these things have a lifetime warranty from good old O'Reilly's. Lifetime warranty. What do you tell them the car that it's on? Okay. Um, 89. I don't. I don't know what side this is. So, passenger side is the longer one. This one looks like the driver side, maybe. Driver side, perfect. Let's see how beefy this one is. It looks a good bit stronger. Chromoly, metal, weak. Okay, I'll show you guys how easy this thing is to put in. So passenger side. Seems a little short. Maybe this one isn't passenger side, maybe this is driver side. Seems a little too short for this.
I don't know why I thought it was passenger side once I got under here, but I even labeled driver's side on it. I don't know why for some reason I forgot as soon as I laid down. It's like, there's a thing when you walk through a doorway, you forget what you were going to do. There's like a psychological thing. It's that. That's what happened as soon as I laid under the car. I forgot. It's just like that. It's that easy. And then there's six little bolts to go through there, but it's really not necessary for me to do that right now, but I'm going to do it. And then as soon as I get the other one tomorrow, but not tomorrow because I'm uh, busy all day tomorrow, we can uh, have it running and driving again. These look a lot stronger, so we'll probably break the diff next time we go out. Fully on, axle nuts on, the whole nine working. We're good to go. Uh, it would be literally finished right now if I had the other axle, unfortunately. So these guys are cooked. You will be the newest addition to the wall of shameful broken parts. Hope you're happy with yourself. Ah, there you go. Welcome to the group.